Shabbat Shalom, and welcome to Secrets Revealed, the Holy Bible. Today we're looking at Genesis chapter 43, beginning in verse 1. There are 34 verses. Verse 1 says, the famine prevailed in the land, versus the famine was sore in the land. Um, so you can see that it definitely was dominant. It was a force, very prominent in the land versus sore in the land. So it just sounds like it was bad in both cases. However, it was a very heavy famine that prevailed. Uh, verse three says, the Lord of the country, the man, the Lord of the country, positively testified to us. So this is Judah saying this to his father, um, the statement that was told him. And then in the Masoretic, it says Judah spoke unto him saying, the man did solemnly protest unto us saying, so you can see the big difference here is that not only does he, not only is he uh, respected more in the Septuagint as the Lord of the country, but he gave them an order, a positive order, or, or assuredly he's testified to us. So you can be certain he said this kind of like, uh, I promise you, he told us this. This is a sure saying. On the other hand, the Masoretic says, he solemnly protested to us, which sounds like an oxymoron in a way. He peacefully protested. <laughs> Moving on to verse 6, why did you harm me? This is Israel talking to his sons. Why did you harm me? Versus, why did you deal so ill with me? Either way, it wasn't a good thing from his perspective and then verse 7 says the man closely questioned us about our family also versus the man asked us asked us straightly of our state and of our kindred so uh, here you can see that uh, they added that he asked about their state but uh, kind of implies that he did ask about their family, which would include them as well. Verse 8 says, uh, store, uh, we will go get food so that um, we won't die, both you, we, you, and our store. Uh, why? How can a store die? The Masoretic says our little ones. Uh, pos possibly that's simply a, a translation of little ones into store. It's hard to understand understand this word otherwise because if it's not him, the father, and his sons, who else would it be? Maybe it, it could be uh, not only the little ones, their children, but also their animals. It could be that as well. Uh, verse 11 talks about the gifts that Israel told them to bring to the man, to Joseph. Bring, bring presents of gum and honey, frankincense and stacta, turpentine and walnuts. In the Masoretic, it describes these gifts as a little balm, so not gum, but balm, and not honey, but a little honey. Spices, frankincense, I believe, is, is a spice. Stacta, uh, rather, myrrh, rather than stacta. Nuts, rather than turpentine. Um, and almonds instead of walnuts. Interesting. But they would replace some of these and change some of these. They aren't. They don't seem to be major differences. But uh, again, in the court of law, they are not the same thing at all. Verse fourteen says, "My God, give you favor in the sight of the man." Uh, this is Israel talking to his son, I believe to Judah, my Elohim give you favor in the sight of the man. Now notice that personal relationship, my Elohim, the ownership he describes the Elohim as. 
uh, being his. And look at the Masoretic now, El Shaddai. So Almighty God, give you mercy before the man instead of favor. Um, either way, they're blessings, but you can see it's more personal in the Septuagint. That you can feel that relationship that Jacob Israel has with his Elohim. Verse 18 says, when they perceived um, that they were brought into the house of Joseph. So they already were brought to his house. Um, but it says in the empty Masoretic text, the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house. Here we don't see that they were afraid in the Septuagint, but uh, they, they reacted differently. Uh, it says that they perceived they were brought into the house of Joseph. So they said, we are brought in because of the money. So they, they perceived the reason for them bringing there is because of this, but it doesn't, say that, it doesn't describe their emotional state, as the MT seems to uh, speculate as to what, or at least not speculate, but uh, describe it in detail. Looking at the next verse, we see verse 23. It says, mercifully with you. Uh, he said to them, this is uh, the steward of the house, saying, mercifully with you, because th this isn't actually there in brackets, versus peace to you. So either way, it's a blessing, mercy or peace. And then the next difference is also in the same verse. It says, the Elohim, your Elohim and the Elohim of your fathers, versus the Elohim of your father. So you can see it's Aza, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's not just Jacob. He had fathers that also followed and worshipped this Elohim. They had that personal relationship with him. Uh, and then the last difference in the same verse is, uh, it's getting to be a big difference, but... Let's look at this. It says, I, this is the steward of Joseph's house, speaking to the brothers of Joseph. I have enough of your good money. So let's pretend, you know, we're in America, for example. And these visitors from Jamaica, let's just throw that out there, and they're visiting from Jamaica. They're, they're staying in America. And they said, you know what? We noticed you gave her money back. The Jamaicans are saying this. And they said, we're going to give you back the money. But I'm the, the innkeeper and I'm saying to them, I have enough of your good money. I have, I have more than enough. I have enough of your uh, Jamaican money. Don't worry about it. That's what it means. On the other hand, in the Masoretic, it, it says that I have your money or I had your money. Some other translations uh, render it as I received your payment, but either way, he received some money from them. So I received your payment. I took your money. So that begs the question: Why would the steward of Joseph's house take back the money that Joseph returned to them in their money bags or their supply bags, with the intention for them to keep them to keep the money? Why would he take it back? It doesn't make any sense in the Masoretic text, but in the Septuagint, it makes complete sense. He, the steward is saying, I know what Joseph said. I know what he did. I'm not taking your money. You keep it, basically, is what he's saying. I have enough of your good money. Uh, that makes a lot more sense. Logistically, you know, it's just common sense to me, at least. In verse 24, uh, the man brought the the men into Joseph's house was added to the Masoretic text. We don't see that in the Septuagint because it's already been mentioned. Uh, that it's, it's also mentioned he's the steward of Joseph's house. So they are there. And it, it was already referenced earlier in the chapter. Notice these two verses, very important and interesting. Verse 26 says they reverenced, they did him reverence uh, to Joseph the brothers did with their face to the ground so this is now the second time they do this since his dream and we can see yeah they bow themselves but it doesn't describe it as reverence him but uh, technically speaking yeah they did sort of worship him in a way 
Um, and that's how it was described the Masoretic. However, the Septuagint said, you will do me reverence. Okay. Verse 28 repeats it the third time. We see uh, they bowed and did him reverence again, the third time. Uh, and it just says they bowed down their heads and made obeisance. So perhaps that is just a synonym, another way to express reverence. So this is the third time that Joseph's dream came true, regarding his brothers at least. Uh, that's important. I think that's significant, the three times being fulfilled. Verse 29, we see here mercy. Uh, when he talks to his younger brother, and I think this is, this is probably the first time he's ever seen him, maybe, because uh, Benjamin wasn't born yet, I, I believe. Uh, Joseph was the youngest, and then he was sold to slavery by his brothers, and Benjamin was born later. Uh, so you see here his greeting, uh, Elohim, have mercy on you, my son. The first words he says to him, uh, verses... Elohim be gracious unto you, my son. So slightly different, not, not huge, not majorly different. Verse 30 says, uh, Joseph was troubled for his bowels yearned over his brother and he just wanted to cry. So he was troubled versus Joseph made haste. So he hurried, uh, but in either case, he was troubled for sure because of this reason. Um, but some people may take this and read it in our modern vernacular and say, okay, well, he has to go to the washroom because his bowel is no, this is something deeper. It's not emotional. I mean, it's, it is emotional. It's not anatomical or to do with digestion. It had to do with his emotional state. I just wanted to mention that because some people may read it that way. Uh, verse 33 says, they sat according to the seniority. So the firstborn according to their seniority. Uh, and then we have the firstborn in the Masoretic uh, sitting according to his birthright. So notice that seniority and birthright. But there is an authority, there is an order hierarchy going on with these 12 or 11 brothers, I should say. And it says that they were amazed, everyone with his brother, or marveled. Uh, I wonder why that... that I really do question, so they were looking at each other like they never saw each other before, or were they just amazed at the circumstances they were in? Was it just something that was extraordinary for them, that they're eating essentially with the lord of the country, like uh, the leader of the most powerful nation at that time, even though he wasn't the actual leader. He wasn't Pharaoh, but he was second to Pharaoh, so they can see this astonishing wealth, this great house he lives in. And they're wondering, why do we get the VIP treatment? Maybe that's what it was. They were wondering, okay, why is this happening to us? And we see more blessings showered upon them. Uh, in verse 34, it says that they, the brothers, took their portions, their food, whatever they were apportioned to eat, from him, from Joseph to themselves. So they had to go and get it themselves. Uh, versus Joseph took and sent the food to them from before him. Uh, why would Joseph do that? He's the leader. He's the authority. He would get servants to do that for him and bring them their food. Or in this case, it does say they took their portion. So he would tell them, okay, here's your food. Go get it. Like, you know, self-serve buffet maybe i'm not sure how it was formatted but they were given a portion however benjamin's was five times as much so that begs the question okay did going by the septuagint they went and to get their portion so maybe they didn't see benjamin's portion or maybe they did because they could see him eating in either case they probably were wondering okay he's the youngest why does he get the most food but it doesn't say them this verse, but uh, you have to really place yourself in the situation and really have the words come alive. And you're thinking, okay, interesting. We all took our food from him and we're happy with what we have because then see they complained. 
but he has five times as much. Maybe he's going to save some for leftovers and maybe we can eat it, we can eat it later. So that's all I have to say about this chapter. It's uh, very interesting. Uh, there's, I won't say major, major differences, but maybe medium major differences, moderate differences, especially the part when it came to the steward saying, I have enough of your good money. You don't have to you know, pay me back or pay uh, Joseph back. Keep your money. Versus, I received your payment. I took your money. What? Why would you do that? You're pretty much reversing what Joseph did. So that's all to say about this chapter again. Um, Shabbat Shalom. May Jehovah bless you and make your way prosperous. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, may he give you a heart to love him truly with, the, with all your strength, all your mind, all your soul, and to love your neighbor as Yahshua loved us. Till next episode, we'll look at Genesis chapter 44. This is Jack Knight signing off for Secrets Revealed, the Holy Bible. Shabbat Shalom.